B, and welcome to the Circle of Hegel. I'm Lady Amaris. So, cleaning the temple. We are now at the part where it is about the spirit. And as I said in previous videos, cleaning the temple is a holistic approach. It is not just, okay, we've worked on the mind, now we're going to work on the body, oh, and now we've got the spirit. It's a holistic approach. You're working on the mind, the body, and the spirit all at the same time, stripping back the layers, slowly but surely, step by step. So we've had the adage of garbage in, garbage out, quality in, quality out. So when it comes to the mind, obviously what you're bringing into your mind, what you're watching, what you're, what you're thinking, what you're reading, what people are saying, all of those things form how you react and how you see the world and how you relate to the world. And this is something that's happened from day dot. Everything that's gone into your body, everything's gone into your mind, uh, has gone into your subconscious mind and has formed how you think, feel and react. So stripping away those layers and starting to reprogram your mind in a way that is more conducive to the way that you want to be and want to live. And we'll start to, to unpack that in, uh, in videos to come. And we also had the garbage in, garbage out with the body. And that is the same thing, what you're putting into your body. The, the food that you're putting into your body, the, the water, the, the quality of the water, the quality of the food. Are you putting pharmaceuticals into your body? Are you, are you having good, clean food as opposed to uh, processed food? All of these things um, also work on your mind as well as your body. The food that you're bringing into your body works on your brain. The more nutrients that your body has, the more that your brain is fed, then the more clearer your thinking is, the clearer the quality of your thinking is, and the more you're able to actually focus. I talked about uh, eating foods, um, so much sugar, and, um, and quite a few carbohydrates that convert into sugar by your body or convert into a type of glucose by your body which can make your brain kind of fuzzy so the quality of your food what you're putting into your body all has a flow-on effect so with the spirit again it's the same thing garbage in garbage out if you're not doing things that are feeding your spirit, feeding your soul, uh, then your soul is going to start to wither and die. So that means going out for a walk in nature. So this works on the body and also on the mind, but it also uplifts the spirit. You go out into nature and you ground yourself. You take your shoes off, you ground your body so it, it helps to focus your mind, but it also works in a way of, of calming the body and the soul is uplifted because we are naturally part of the environment and when we cut ourselves off from the environment when we shut ourselves off in houses when we keep shoes on and stop ourselves from actually grounding and connecting with the earth we shut ourselves off we shut ourselves off from our souls and it means that we become disjointed and disconnected when we start to go out into nature, start to go out for walks, not only do we start to connect with nature and, and begin to understand the cycles of nature, but we also start to awaken that within ourselves and we start to understand the cycles within ourselves and we start to relax and de-stress and become awakened and alive. So other things that you can do to feed your soul is to do things that uplift you. Many of us work in jobs that uh, we just do so that we can earn money to do the things that we'd like to do. But unfortunately, after years and years and years and years and years and years of doing that job, it starts to, to bring you down and you start to kind of think that you are that job. I am the uh, postman. I am the uh, the shop assistant. I am the, um, the policeman or the teacher. 
And you forget those things that you do, that you want to do on a daily basis. Those things that you just took that job so that you have money to do. It morphs into the, the fact that you start to become that, that teacher, that, that policeman, that postman. And you no longer do those uplifting things that you wanted to do in the first place. So it's now time to, to reconnect with those things that you wanted to do. Um, whether it is um, read a book, um, you have a whole library of books that you never seem to be able to read. So taking that time to, to actually sit down, relax and, and re reacquaint yourself with the books. Have a laugh with friends. I'm always working, I'm always working, stress, 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 and I never get to see my friends anymore. Take some time out. Go and see your friends. Have good conversations with your friends. Laugh, joke. All those things that you used to do that made you feel really, really good and, and fed your soul. Listen to happy music. Now, everyone has a different idea of what music is is good and what is not so it's up to the individual what music makes you feel alive makes you feel awake and makes you feel happy that's the music that you listen to and whether it means that it is um, metal music or maybe top 40 music or whether it is a symphony um, whatever it is it could be dubstep whatever it uh, it is that makes you feel happy and alive that's the music you listen to and it's not going to be the same for everyone focus on substance as opposed to trivialities if you focus on the trivial it's not feeding your soul it's not feeding your mind and it's not feeding your body so focus on substance focus on good laughter with friends and uh, and listening to good music. Start to reawaken your creative side. Now when you're a child you would paint, you would draw, you would probably sculpt whether it was with mud or with clay, uh, you would do all manners of creative things uh, and it didn't matter whether it looked good or not, you thought it looked great and uh, it's time to get back to that, that childlike quality of, of wanting to create, wanting to use your hands, wanting to use your mind in a creative way. And what this does is it's good for the mind because it means that you're using both sides of your brain. So you're using, um, if you spend most of your time using that analytical part of your brain, then it starts to awaken that that what's known as the feminine part of the brain, the creative part of the brain, the part of the brain where you understand symbols and you, you start to, to awaken that side and it is that, that creative, that magic side of you. You start to awaken that by starting to be creative. Now don't analyse the things that you do. Not everyone's going to start out being a Leonardo da Vinci. It may end up that you look a little bit like a Picasso with eyes and noses and you know all manner of things all over the place. It doesn't matter. It is that process. It is that creative process and starting to awaken that part. Whether you start off with stick figures or whether you get right in there, get your hands dirty and just move the colour and paint around, start sculpting and moving and shaping forms. Or maybe your creative process is writing. Maybe it is getting pen and paper and just writing down your thoughts and your feelings and, and getting all of that out. Or even gardening. Gardening is a wonderful way of getting into the, into the earth and, and getting in touch with the earth. But it is also a good thing to do is to start to, to create, create a garden, uh, plan out the garden. Use that, that creative side of your brain, the creative side of your mind. And as you do that, you will start to, to become more creative. And when it comes to being able to do uh, spells and, and, and witchcraft in general, that creative part of your brain is paramount. Without that, you cannot craft a spell. The whole part of the craft part of the witch is being able to use your hands, use your imagination, work out different ways of doing things. 
and the more that you can create, you, you are builders and creators of your reality. So if you start to learn to build and create, even on a mundane level of sculpturing or painting, then you can start to understand what it's like to start to create on an astral level, on a creative level that you start to create your universe. So getting in touch with that creative side is a wonderful thing to feed your soul. So now it comes to, again, that holistic process. A strong mind, a strong body, and a strong soul. So it's all about creating an immune system. This immune system is a psychic immune system as opposed to an immune system that is to do with, with disease um, that we know, like a cough or a cold or, or something like that. This is a psychic immune system where you build up your strength, you build up your immunity to in a, in a way of your mind. You build up your immunity to subliminal images coming in. The more that you're aware of them, the less they're going to have an effect on you. When it comes to your body, the stronger your body is, then obviously you are going to be as sick as often because you have an immune system that is nice and strong. And again, when it comes to your soul, you have a strong soul immune system. So when it comes to things like psychic attack, you are again stronger and become more aware of it. You have uh, what is known as maybe a spider sense, that you can sense that sort of thing before it even happens almost, and you can shore up your defenses. Now, all of these sorts of things don't happen overnight. You need to start to cultivate that. And as Aristotle has said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So we need to form the habit of quietening the mind. We need to form the habit of meditation, of concentration. We need to form the habit of eating good foods, exercising. We need to form the habit of talking with friends, doing things that uplift us, not becoming a robot or a slave to your job starting to do things that feed your soul. And as you slowly do that, day upon day, week upon week, year upon year, you form a habit. And as you repeatedly do this, the better and more excellent you become. And all of this is also part of breaking out of your comfort zone, stripping away the layers, finding out what makes you tick, taking away all those things that don't serve you, all those foods that don't serve you, and doing things that uplift you and move you along your path. It is about growth, and a lot of the times it's not comfortable, but it is something that you need to do. If you want to follow the path of the witch, it means finding out who you are, being the best that you can be, and then tomorrow be even better. I look forward to seeing you in the next instalment where we will be looking at the shadow. My name is Lady Amaris. Merry meet, merry part, and merrily we meet again. Blessed be.